Hey, it's Andrew here at Vespa Portland, and I'm standing with a scooter that we don't talk a heck of a lot about. This is the Piaggio BV350 in America, and in Europe, it's called the Beverly 350. Now, Piaggio is the parent company of Vespa. Piaggio makes their own line of bikes that is completely separate from the Vespa line, and that line doesn't get as much airtime as the more iconic Vespa. But Piaggio scooters are just as reliable. In many cases, they're using a lot of the same exact engines or same internals. Um, and in some cases, they might be the better scooter for a specific job. And the BV350 is kind of what you'd call a Swiss Army knife of a scooter. Really excellent bike that I personally didn't have a lot of experience with until a trip recently uh, back in February 2020, where I got to ride one of these for a week. And after that week, I was just sold on how awesome this bike is. And if I needed another scooter, and if I had more room in my garage, I would definitely consider adding one of these to the collection. So Piaggio scooters are a little more sporty in style uh, than a Vespa, let's just a little more classic line. Uh, they are able to drive the price down a bit on them because they add more plastic panels, uh, whereas the Vespa has a metal unibody frame. These bikes are extremely popular in Europe. If you've been over there at all, you've probably seen tons of these on the street and people commuting on them in suits, open face helmets, cigarette hanging out of their mouth. Uh, they're just kind of a workhorse a bike over there and they, they're perfect for pretty much anything, for highway riding, for inner city riding with a lot of traffic. They're not super heavy, the center of gravity is pretty low and they just feel great and have a lot of good power and good gas mileage. So it's kind of the perfect scooter in a lot of ways. So like I said, I got to ride one of these for a week down on a recent trip to San Diego in February. Full disclosure, you've, if you're watching Vespa videos, you've probably seen Vespa Motorsports videos and Robot who does uh, the majority of those, those videos. Uh, Robot's a good friend of mine, so he was nice enough to let me ride his scooter around. Uh, we actually crossed the border and did some riding in Mexico and then ended up on some dirt roads in Baja, California that were better suited for dirt bikes. But this, even on that type of terrain, the BV performed really, really well. It was a little stressful to be riding on those types of roads. You know, you're riding your friend's bike, you don't want to drop it. Uh, but, you know, thankfully no mishaps. And uh, it gave me some really good insight on what the BV is and what it's great at and why it's the kind of the perfect bike for a lot of applications. That BV is his daily driver and he's made two videos that I know of. Uh, one where he walks through that particular bike as daily driver and tells you what he thinks about it as an owner. And then he's also done a 2020 BV350 walkthrough, which is basically what I'm doing right now. Um, so between this video and his video, I think you'll get a pretty decent idea of what this bike's capable of. Uh, he has more of an owner perspective. I don't own one of these, so I can't really speak to that level of, of uh, knowledge about it. Uh, I, I had a week, but I felt like that week was a pretty good test of what this thing could do. All right, so we'll start out with some technical specifications about this just to get that stuff out of the way. Um, I'm gonna go a little quicker with some things with this bike because uh, a lot of the videos we do, it's for total beginner riders. My assumption is someone who just started riding is probably not going to jump on a BV350. I could be wrong, uh, but chances are if you're riding this, maybe you've um, spent some time riding either motorcycles and you're kind of having trouble getting your leg over those at this point in life, or you just want something kind of quicker for the highway. So the BV350 is 30.2 horsepower. It has 21.4 foot-pounds of torque. It is fuel injected, of course. It's liquid cooled and it has dual hydraulic disc brakes, and if you're really specific about that, it's 300 millimeter in the front and 240 in the rear. The scooter weighs 395 pounds, uh, so it's about 40 to 45 pounds heavier than what you're gonna see with a GTS, Vespa GTS 300. The front wheel is 16 inch, uh, taking a 110 70 16 tire, and it's a 14 inch wheel on the back, which takes a 150 70 14, which is a nice wide tire. Uh, the bike is just a touch over seven feet long and the wheelbase is a touch over five feet long. So the larger wheels, longer body, added weight, bigger engine, uh, longer wheelbase, wider frame, makes this bike feel really good at high speeds. It almost feels like a automatic motorcycle in that regard. Of course, the scooter is essentially automatic. Um, you've just got it's CVT transmission, so there's no real gears to go through. You got a throttle here on the right side, you got a front brake and a rear brake on the left side. All right, so going handheld now, we're gonna start with the controls on the left side. Obviously, you've got your regular headlight, you've got an option for a high beam, and you have a passing option right here. Uh, push down and flash the high beam. 
you've got regular turn signals right here. Uh, these are not self-canceling. You're going to have to go ahead and push in to cancel, but you know, obviously left and right for the turn signal. You got a horn right there. I'll let you hear what that sounds like. Pretty standard horn. And you also have an electronic seat pop to pop the seat on the scooter. Moving over to the right side, you've got obviously a kill switch in the off position or the run position. You also have a mode button. What that's going to do is when the scooter is uh, in an on state, uh, the mode is going to cycle through the options over here, odometer, the battery, Fahrenheit odometer, trip odometers, etc. And if you want to cancel uh, or clear out your trip odometers, all you've got to do is go to one of them and hold in the mode button and that'll clear out to zero. For indicator lights right here on the dashboard, uh, you've got the ABS system, you got the traction control system right there, which we'll talk about in just a sec. You've got a fuel gauge here on the, the left side, speedometer obviously over here, and you have a temperature gauge right there. You may notice on the speedometer that it's actually kilometers per hour is the major uh, graphic on there, and it's miles per hour on the inside. You got a clock as well, of course. The ABS system uh, is an analog braking system. The brakes on the BV are not linked. Uh, this is just going to keep your brakes from locking up and sliding if that's uh, an issue you're having if you have a panic stop. And there's also ASR traction control right there. Basically what the traction control system does is it's trying to keep your wheels moving at the same speed. And if it senses that they're getting out of sync, uh, it will actually retard the throttle and stop listening to your throttle inputs until it can get those uh, wheels back in as close to sync as, as can be. And that can save you if you're coming around a corner and there's some kind of you know, gravel on the ground, wet leaves, wet surface. Uh, it might be enough to keep you upright. It's a pretty responsive system and the BV is a pretty powerful scooter. And if you kind of nail it at a red light, uh, when the light turns green, uh, you might notice that the throttle doesn't really, isn't really listening to you um, because it might you know, detect the wheel slipping a little bit and uh, think that you're maybe in a bad situation. You can turn that off real easy by just put, touching that button there on the, the dash and when the light goes out, the ASR is off. The ABS light flashes uh, continuously until you go over three miles an hour and at that point it turns off. What that flash is telling you is that the ABS system is enabled uh, and then as soon as you stop again at a light, stop sign, whatever, it'll actually flash again until you again move up past three miles an hour. The key positions right here are lock, off, and on. Uh, the lock position, you just turn your, your bars all the way to the side when you're parked in public and turn the key to the locked position and it will lock your handlebars so someone can't easily walk away with your bike. If you want to click it one click over to the off position, you can access things like the seat pop and the glove box. And then of course in the on position, you're going to engage the electrical system and be able to start the bike. In the on position or the off position, you can actually push straight in on the key and the glove box will open up. And this is the glove box right here. So what you got going on in the glove box is right down here you have a little tray for change or something if you're going through a toll booth. On the left side there's room for registration, gloves, you know, small item. Not a giant tray, but you know, it can hold some stuff in there. Right in the middle you have a manual seat pop. So this is going to be a cable that pops the seat, much like uh, this electric version. Uh, this is if you're, you don't want to turn the bike on or if you had a dead battery, you can still access the seat by pulling that. Behind here you have your VIN number on the frame and on the far right side you've got a USB port. Super useful. Right back tucked in here, USB port, charge your phone up. Um, don't leave anything plugged into it when the bike is off. You could draw draw on the battery. If you've got, uh, you could probably leave a phone in there if you want. It does get a little warm inside of that compartment. Maybe a better spot is to have your phone mounted up here on a ram mount so you can snake the cable out of this glove box and up to your phone and then have uh, navigation ability. Closing the glove box. Right here on the middle of the dash, you have the, the bag hook that's kind of come to be known on most larger displacement Vespas. Uh, kind of nice, it's not on every scooter out there in the world, so you can hang a little bag here, to-go food, whatever, backpack, that sort of thing. These are the keys that come with the scooter. Um, really, you just get these three things. Pretend those aren't there for now. Um, this is the master key. It's a chipped key, so it's gonna communicate with the ECU on the scooter. 
and this is the key you'd want to put in a safe place somewhere at home and not use. You can make copies like this uh, from this key. This is the key you'd want to use on a daily basis while this one is home safe. It's a sidewinder design, a little more expensive to cut, but it is what it is. Your bike also comes with a key fob. Um, not the most useful thing, honestly. I have one on my 2020 GTS. The left side, if you hold it, the seat will pop, and then the right side, uh, all the, head, the uh, turn signals will flash um, in case you're in a place where there's so many BVs that you don't know which one's yours. Uh, probably not happening here in the US. These keys right here are for the top case that we'll talk about in just a little bit, uh, but not important at the moment. All right, so let's get under the seat on this thing. Uh, I'm just gonna hit the electric seat pop right there. All right, so here we are in the seat. Uh, one thing we do here at Vespa Portland is always put a service sticker underneath the seat uh, to tell you when your next service is. The first service is at 600 miles. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, beyond that, there is no more rain cover included with these, but it can be ordered as a separate part. Your battery is gonna hide out underneath this panel right here, and you have some tools here as well. Underneath here, it's a pretty decent bucket and kind of nice, it has a light in the back of it there. Uh, it's still not large enough to hold a full face helmet. It might hold one of those sort of useless half helmets that you pretty much just use to skirt the law. Three quarter helmet, probably not gonna fit which is a bit of a bummer, but it is kind of deep for other things. One downside, I think, of the BV350 is that it does not have helmet hooks at the front of the seat bucket here. So on the Vespa Primavera, GTS, et cetera, these little posts pop up and you can hang your helmet in this space. And when you close the seat, uh, your helmet's secured in there. Not an option on the BV. So you can either take the helmet with you or maybe put it in a top case if you've got one but uh, or maybe just leave it on the seat if you're trusting but one thing to think about so moving around to the front of the scooter here one cool thing about the bv350 is it comes stock with a small windscreen it's definitely enough to get some wind off of your chest uh, when you're at higher speed your height though is going to play a part in uh, how useful this is so i'm six feet tall and this smaller windscreen kind of kicks the wind up at my collar on my t-shirt and makes it flop around if you're shorter than me it's gonna kick it up higher, it might be at your chin level or directly into the helmet, hard to say. But it's cool that they bring it along. There's also a taller windscreen option available, which is really nice and it really uh, pitches the wind way over your head. When the key comes on, the headlight does not turn on, you know, conserving battery. We'll turn the scooter on here for a second, you can see the headlight. So you see it there, maybe it's blind in the camera, I can't tell. Um, you have Your high beam is actually on the bottom of the headlight, your low beam is on the top and when you flash, Obviously the whole thing flashes together. As we move down here, you can see that the BV350 has turn signals in the US market spot. Uh, in Europe, they're, they're down here in this assembly. Has a really good looking LED running light set on both sides. And if you wanted to take apart some of the Tupperware and put these turn signals back in the body where they are in Europe, you could do that, but maybe not worth the time. Uh, the reason those are up there instead is if I turn the bars straight here, you can see that where those are hanging is actually a bit wider than where they would be in the body. And that's a DOT requirement that on import, they be a certain width apart from each other. And this body just wasn't enough. On the back of the scooter here, you've got your running lights. Again, the turn signals are going to be uh, mounted down here on the European models. This portion of the light is clear and the turn signal is actually up there, but again, not wide enough for the DOT's liking, so they get put here. The good thing about that is instead of turn signals up here, and instead of leaving them empty, you get extra brake lights. So good for visibility, good for safety, nice to have, and your turn signals can just live down here. So if you watch Robot's video, one thing you probably noticed is that he had this kind of funny moment where he said, here's how you get gas in the BV. First off, you take this key, and you put it into this locking cap and you pull this fuel cover off and you throw it away. Um, <laughs> he's not worried about anybody stealing his three gallons of gas. Um, and in San Diego, that kind of thing might be fine because it doesn't rain there very much. But here in the Northwest, I would definitely recommend not throwing this out. Definitely still using it to cover because you've got a little bit of a, a reservoir in here that, that uh, will fill up with rain and you don't really want all that water seeping into the scooter. 
if you can help it. So better to, to actually not throw this thing away. Is this thing cumbersome? A little annoying, absolutely. In filming this, this is my third or fourth attempt now because I've been messing with this thing, trying to get it back in one try. It's a little, a little bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, but, you know, just pop it down and fill up this scooter with 91 octane uh, fuel. You can pump it yourself in Oregon, which is kind of nice, and then replace the little locking fuel cap and be on your way. The BV is definitely capable of doing two-up touring. Uh, your passenger can sit right up here and you have fold-out foot pegs on each side for the passenger. So the scooter comes with a center stand, which is always going to be your best bet as far as um, sturdy parking, long-term parking. It's got two points of contact with the ground and that combined with the front wheel makes a nice three-point contact. Uh, the center stand is my preferred stand to use all the time. It also, however, has a bicycle style side stand or motorcycle style side stand. When you put that down, it's actually going to kill the engine if the engine is running, so keep that in mind. All right, so let's talk about service intervals. So pretty much any Vespa or Piaggio product is going to require its first service at 600, 625 ish miles. Uh, most dealerships are just going to tell you 600 because it's an easy num number to remember. So after that, you're going to go to 6200 miles before you need to come back. Uh, that's going to be a fluid change and kind of cursory inspection. Your first major service happens at 12,400 miles and that's a variator belt. You have a drive belt in here. Uh, the rollers, the sliders, the spark plug, the oil filter, air filter, and engine oil are replaced. Uh, 6,000 more takes you to 18,600, I believe. That uh, gets you up to another fluid check. And then by the time you're at 24,000, it's major service time again and the first valve adjustment. Uh, pretty excellent service interval. It's going to keep you out of the uh, shop and, and riding much longer. Um, is that great for me, an owner of a Vespa shop? Of course not, but it's not all about me. So next up, we'll talk about accessories. On the Piaggio line in general, it's a little less uh, extensive than what you can do with a Vespa in terms of customization. Uh, these are really kind of more practical scooters. Uh, used for everyday commuting and that sort of thing. Um, on the BV itself, pretty much the only stuff that's going on with it outside of like variator kits, uh, different you know performance kind of mufflers, is uh, a top case. Uh, this is a color match top case in the matte green that this particular bike is in. You could also add a different top case, anything by Givi or, or whatever. Um, Robot's got this big uh, metal top case that's actually really nice uh, on the back of his BV. This is the color matched version that Paul uh, coming up from Newport, Oregon tomorrow to get this bike wanted. And uh, there's also a tall windscreen option. For colors of the bike itself, as of 2020, this is available in the matte green you see here. It's also in a matte blue and a silver color. They don't go too crazy with the colors on the BV. I suspect they'll be similar in the 2021 line. They might change out one or two. All right, so before I get going here, um, it would be wrong of me to just kind of pump this bike up all the way and not complain about something. So I actually do have two complaints. One of them is dumb uh, because it's something I could have easily done something about. But when you're riding someone else's bike, obviously they set the mirrors up for themselves. And on the BV350, you've got your typical uh, adjustment here at the perch, and you also have one up here. And on you know some of the Vespas, it's just kind of a ball mount and you can move the scooter uh, mirror whichever way you want. On the BV, you actually need to loosen it and then move it. I'm a touch too tall, even when I could move it to, uh, to have the mirrors sideways. I had to like really angle them out. But I think if I had a wrench at the time handy to me, I could have loosened this nut right here and kind of really moved it out to where I could see uh, the lane next to me, no problem. Um, that's more an issue of riding someone else's bike and that's not set up for me. Robot is like 5'7", I'm six foot, so obviously there's gonna be some gap there. The other thing is the seat. Piaggio, do something about this seat. If you are six feet tall, uh, you are probably gonna feel like you would rather be sitting about a half inch further back. Uh, there is no other seat option, unfortunately. I've looked that up. Um, I was looking for maybe some kind of a flat seat or something with a more gradual kind of incline right here, but the way they've got it, you got your passenger right here and you've got yourself right here and that's the, the line of demarcation. And so if I sit on this scooter here, you'll see that, you know, it looks fine, 
but as you ride, you start to kind of slide forward sometimes, and it, it just felt like I was kind of doing one of these uh, a little too often. Um, I'd love to be able to sit back like right here, but I'm sitting right on that hill, basically, and it's never gonna happen. I'm gonna slide down into this spot. Uh, so that's one thing I just kind of wish was a little different or there was an option of something else. Could maybe take this to an upholstery place and have it redone, if it, but you know, it's kind of a, an overkill thing. But I'd say six foot, um, probably, if you're six foot or over and you're considering getting a BV350, it's probably something you wanna come sit on first and see if, how you like the, the feel. If you're below six foot, should be no problem. Uh, plenty of room here to sit, plenty of room there. So this is the BV350. I'd say the main takeaway with this bike is that it's a Swiss Army knife type of scooter. You could ride this only to work and back, to the grocery store and back, or you can take a really long trip uh, down some dirt roads in Mexico, or like one of our old service managers, Ben, uh, from Portland all the way to Glacier National Park and back, and then later on to, I think, Portland to Utah to, to Zion National Park or Moab, one of the two, and back. Uh, no issues. It's just a bike that is going to rip on the freeway if you need it to. If you've ever been to California, you know that it's kind of full gas and full brake down there and in like the left lane on the freeway, people are always ripping 80 plus miles an hour. You don't maybe want to do that on a daily basis, but this bike will keep up in a way that I don't think the GTS necessarily would in that situation. I never got the BV350 all the way to its top speed, but based on what it felt like around 80, I would suspect it'll get into the low 90s, uh, which is more than enough for what you, know, you probably need to do on a commute to work. 390 pounds with a really low center of gravity, all the engine below you, the gas tank uh, down here in the floorboard, uh, makes this thing feel really good. In traffic, um, if you're in a state like California where you can lane split, uh, no big deal there. You can get through the, the traffic pretty easily. The wheels still aren't uh, too big for uh, some easy agility at low speed, but they do definitely soften up the bumps on a rough road. Uh, more so than maybe the 12 inch wheel on the Vespa. So that's about it. Uh, I just want to show you this bike that we don't talk a heck of a lot about. We typically always have at least one in stock, sometimes two, uh, but since Portland's kind of a smaller city where people have really shorter commutes, um, this bike doesn't move as fast as something like a 150cc or a 50cc. I'd say a great application for this bike is if you live outside of Portland and you're commuting in, uh, especially downtown, there's a lot of parking garages down there that allow parking of scooters or motorcycles for free. It doesn't say that on their website, but if you want to know more about that, contact us. I don't want to say the name on a video and potentially blow it for everybody, but uh, that is an option. This is a bike that's going to tackle the Highway 26 hill, no problem. Any of the West Hills, no problem. Um, if you were coming up from as far as, you know, Salem or further on I-5, no problem keeping up with traffic uh, at all. And the longer service interval and the larger tires are definitely going to keep you out of the shop longer than a smaller displacement scooter with smaller tires. Thanks to Robot San Diego for letting me ride his bike for a week. Definitely check out their videos at Vespa Motorsport here on YouTube. And uh, that's it for the BV from me. Thanks for watching. This is Andrew here at Vespa Portland. We will see you next time.